Hi, this is Bob, the old ham. My golly, been on the air now uh, 60 years. Holy cow. And, uh, well, it'll be 60 years in 58. So we're coming up on 60 years. Working on a Heathkit HW104 this morning. Found something very interesting with this HW104. You know, the HW104 is like the SB104. They didn't make many of the HW104s. Uh, they have an analog dial where the SB104 has a digital dial. And everybody wanted the digital dial. So they bought the SB104s. There wasn't that much of a difference in the price, I don't think. But uh, I had one of these back in uh, the late 70s and really liked it. I had a chance to buy this one and I bought it. But one of the problems I ran into with this, which really surprised me, what the solution was. Uh, the VFO was drifting and uh, I thought, oh gee, I'm going to take that VFO apart and clean the uh, variable capacitor and uh, maybe change some temperature compensating capacitors and things. And I thought, oh man, that could be a long drawn out process. So uh, I took the cover off and the VFO is mounted up on the top side, which is on the bottom here right now. Anyway, I, uh, I was... Uh, checking it out, running it to see how much it drifted. And what I found was when I happened to move the VFO box, I just moved it a little bit, and the dial lights got bright and dim, bright and dim as I moved that VFO box. And I thought, well, now the VFO's got to get proper voltage. It's not getting proper voltage if that's what's going on because the dial lights run off of the same line that the uh, VFO was powered from. So uh, what I got to doing was, I'll turn this thing over on its side here. There we go. was right here. You can see there's a little white wire right there. And I've got it soldered to the side of this dial light here. And to the dial light there. That one just goes to the lug on the dial light. This one goes to the lug on the dial light down here. There's three dial lights and then it comes over here where I put a ground lug. And now when I do that to the VFO the light does not change. Now I know you're gonna say hey you should have just tightened up those screws. Believe me I did. They're as tight as I can get them. In fact I was worried about stripping them. I tightened them up so tight. And then I loosened them and tightened them and loosened them and tightened them because I thought that would clean up underneath the screws. I think you could take uh, those screws completely out and then scrape it with a pocket knife and then put them back in and it would probably work okay. But my solution was to run a wire, a ground wire, from a ground lug over here on this part and solder that ground lug to this pilot light, that pilot light and that pilot light. And that also connects to the case of the VFO. The difference in stability on this VFO was amazing. I was going to take it all apart and do work on the VFO and I didn't have to. All I had to do was put that ground wire in there. And so I thought I better put that on a video and show the guys. So then the, the radio here was also making a strange noise once in a while. And I came along and I tightened all these screws. There's the VFO screws in the bottom there. But there are screws here for the, uh, for the ground lugs. Here's one right here. Here's one right here. Here's one over here. Here's one over here. You notice I put two 10 amp uh, silicon diodes in there backwards. They go right over here to the 12 volt power line right there. And I put two of them in because this thing is normally 20 amps and it's got a 20 amp power supply. So what happens if you connect the power supply up backwards? These diodes conduct and blow the 20 amp fuse I've got in the line. And believe me, I've done it. <laughs> now you can see right here how I came along with some bare wire and I ran it from this solder lug to that solder lug to that solder lug over here to a uh, solder pin and I went it over this way to a solder lug over here. So what I did is I connected 
these grounds together and this thing was making noises and I did the same thing on this that I did on the VFO I tightened all the screws as tight as I could get them and still had problems so I am telling you it's made a great improvement in this HW 104 I know it would do the same on a SB 104 and as a matter of fact I had an AR2 receiver that I made a video on and the AR2 receiver improved tremendously when I did that I ran a ground wire from one lug to the other lug to the other lug and grounded extra ground on all of the ground lugs an independent wire ground and I just thought wow this is really neat sometimes the simplest little things make the biggest difference now it took me probably about an hour to put all those ground wires in there and to ground that VFO but oh man does this thing work good now and so I thought I'm going to show the guys about how that is and what causes the problem and what you can do about it I'm working this with one hand here there we go and here's my uh, here's my note to myself that I laid on the rig last night after I wiggled the VFO fix the grounds so that's it guys like I say sometimes the simplest little things make the biggest difference 73's and good DX